Lunch Money Lambert, Jeff Malott. Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Where we talk about fishing and competition. It's your boy Ox Pippin, aka Ox Fishing. Don't come over here tripping. Hey, hope you enjoy the show. Jeff Malat, Lunch Money Lambert, <laughs> Lego. Hey, welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Kite Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Welcome to the Welcome to the Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Welcome to the Hey, welcome to the Welcome to the Kai Fast Nation. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to KBN Live. We're doing something a little different tonight, Ryan. You ready for this? <laughs> this is your show, buddy. I'm just. I here. know. I, I already, <laughs> I already explained to our panel, to our panel that Ryan is not a uh, YouTube aficionado. <laughs> no. But he is a very creative mind, so you'll be able to in insert your own creative uh, ideas into this. What do you think? Okay. All right. I can't wait. I can't wait yeah, for yeah. that to come into play. <laughs> so I've been, I've been messing around with doing this for a while, which is. A YouTube channel review show, kind of giving back to the viewers of this. I, I, you know, kayak fishing, especially if you're a tournament angler, you're trying to get sponsor support. Maybe you just have fun on YouTube, whatever. You have to grow on these different social medias. And YouTube, for video content anyway, is still kind of the gold standard. I know TikTok's booming, Instagram Reels, things like that. But for long form, you know, multi-minute, not just 60-second clips, long videos, YouTube's the standard. So I thought we'd get a panel together, review some of y'all's channels, give you some constructive, positive feedback. Maybe Ryan will give you some not so positive feedback. I don't know, but it, but it'll be fun. This will uh, be like my fourth time watching YouTube. So this yeah, yeah. Good. So uh, <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Now the panel has been adjusted multiple times, uh, <laughs> actually throughout the day today. So uh, Bailey has hung in there. He has not caught any kind of disease yet. He does not have the COVID or anything else. So well, he's on. Not, he's trying let's to not go that far. Right? Yeah, Bailey from know. Serious Angular. Be the fish. Uh, we'll go through all the different things he's got going on. Uh, he's going to be on the panel. And then we've got Jay from Bearded Dad Fishing on YouTube. He's got a, a fast growing channel over there on YouTube. He's going to be the other part of the panel. Uh, Alex has got, I think, COVID. He couldn't make yep. it. Damien Tao from California. His dad is very ill. So prayers up for Damien's dad. He had, to, he had to take care of his dad. So shout out to you, Damien. Uh, so Jay actually commented in the thread when I was asking for channels. And I was like, wait a minute, I know his channel. He's got 10,000 subs and his, you know, a lot of views on a lot of his videos. He's doing good. He needs to come on this panel. So he, he's on the he's on the he's on the panel. Thank you. So Thank you go. for the the two healthy YouTubers that we yeah. could <laughs> that we could locate in the world today. Yeah. Both Eagles nervous. fans. Both Eagles fans. Nervous. They got one eye on the Eagles game while we're doing this. So hopefully they'll pay attention to what we're trying to do here. Uh, yeah, we'll get him in here in just a minute. Before we get going with that, Ryan, I just wanted to say, uh, kind of make a special shout out to the Malone family. I'm going to throw Pat's picture up. Sad news uh, over the last weekend here, the last few days. Uh, Pat Malone, for those that, that know him, one of the best human beings in kayak fishing, just a general great human being in general, uh, passed away, lost his battle with cancer. Very, very sad to, to hear that. Uh, over the and, last few I days. mean, he never, never quit. He never checked up like he um, it was right after the the first Bassmaster Championship uh, when when he found out, you know, what was going on with him. And I mean, he kept fishing, kept hunting. He was all the time sending me deer pictures and uh, like he he did did every bit of it. He will be missed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, he he had a bad prognosis to begin with. He, he fought a lot longer than most doctors thought he would would go. Uh, so, you know, shout out to, to the Malone family. Uh, we're all going to miss Pat. Great man. Uh, and we'll, we'll just send prayers up for the family for strength getting through this. So, 
a lot of a lot of comments for him in the comments as well. A lot of positive comments for Pat. So appreciate y'all that are watching. Uh, on a happier note, congrats to Stevo. He won the freaking Seminole <laughs> Georgia Bass Nation tournament this weekend. Yeah, that's Went crazy. Went down there and wrecked him. He wrecked him. He did good. Had some uh, had some duck hunters chase him off where he was trying to fish, and he just went. Like Steve O does, just kind of meandering around <laughs> in some backwater and bumped into 97 inches of fish. Looking for some bobcat to eat and won a tournament back there. He was fishing like around three headless deer carcasses, he said. Really? Yeah. So apparently, if you see those, bass also feed on them. So head chum, down. live chum. There you go. Or dead chum, I guess. Um, yeah, let's shout out the sponsors and get these fellas in here. We'll, we'll, We've got a lot of channels to get go through. I don't know that we'll get through them all. I just don't know, but we're going to try. I'm just going to let you drive this one, Dad. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. All right. Uh, we got a fair amount of folks jumping in. If you're on YouTube, just comment where you're watching from. Uh, like the like the the uh, stream over there. If you're on Facebook, do what you do over there. Just like and share, comment. Let us know where you're watching from. If you're watching football, let us know who you're going for. Bucks or Eagles? Let us know tonight. We got two Eagles fans on the show. Uh, shout out to the sponsors real quick and we'll get the fellas in man eco fishing shop eco fishing shop.com tournament times here man bos is, mm -hmm. is upon us uh local tournaments will be starting depending on what part of the country you're in because it's ain't none around here it's cold and frozen around here but in the deep south they'll be happening soon so hit up eco fishing shop if you need anything they'll hit they'll get you hooked up uh pro god lithium we are still sitting about 10 degrees here in Arkansas, and I charged up all my pro guides with my, and I have my adapter on standby to charge all my devices if I needed. So I got the new 100 amp hour in, and it's got a, uh, a battery meter built into the, the 100 amp hour. So that's handy, handy to have in case you yeah. need to check your charge before you take out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, NA Angling is commenting from Fayetteville, Arkansas. So yeah, it's still cold here, man. I was out shoveling the driveway this morning. It was cold. Took my dog for a while. She was limping around the street. She couldn't take that cold, man. She wasn't about that life. Uh, Bangtail whiskey, of course. Drink of choice for us. Uh, Gil, you, are, you got in a snowball fight wearing your gill. How'd that, Dude, how'd that do? I wore that Apex suit all day, bone dry. If you need a snowball fight suit, that's the one you need to go for. Highly <laughs> recommend it. Yeah, last week we did our Seaguard giveaway. We'll have a Z-Man com giveaway coming up soon. Uh, we did a Revo giveaway the week before. But tonight it's all about the channel reviews. We're not doing a giveaway tonight. We're giving away knowledge tonight. That's what okay. we're doing Okay, all right. So there we go. Uh, we got Ramel in the comments. Unless Ramel wants to jump on and give away like a two thousand dollar prize pack, <laughs> more than welcome. Ramel. You never know, man. You never know. Yeah, I saw so, he was putting speakers in uh, rod tube holes the other day. He's he's tricking them out now with sound systems. The wizard, literally. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get these fellas in here. Jay, Yo, what's up? Dun -dun. Bailey, what's up? What's going on with the Eagles? They struggling? They they? What's going on over there? Still struggling. It's not looking good. <laughs> May feel as bad as the Cowboys. Uh, it might be worse. Oh, well, I guess we'll wow. see. Wow, yeesh. Who to thunk it? Oh, yeah. Who to thunk it? Well, guys, I appreciate y'all being willing to do jump on this panel tonight and do this for folks that are watching. Want some some good feedback, some constructive feedback on trying to grow the YouTube channels over there. It's tough, man. It's not easy. It, it's it's hard work, consistent work, persistent work, whatever you want to call it to get it done over there and the folks that are that are trying to do it will take any knowledge they can they can glean so appreciate y'all being willing to take the time tonight to do this heck yeah sure. never done it like it but uh it should be fun and yeah. I, i'll preface uh jay's way better at it than i am and <laughs> i am no pro at this but i'm happy to give feedback come on man. i know you game. i know you i know you'd be researching um yeah <laughs> So first, uh, we'll let Jay go. Bearded Dad Fishing on YouTube. Give us a little background on what you got going over there with your channel and uh, how long you've been Yeah. Doing. So I started the channel, I don't know, man, 2021. Wife got me a GoPro, and I was, like, just bored. So I was like, let me just upload my videos. Started doing my channel just based around me going out fishing. Did that, like, I went maybe six videos deep. And, uh, and then gave up. I took like a six month hiatus after that because I was getting like 50 views, maybe a video. Came back in 2022 and I couldn't go fishing on my birthday. So I wanted to put out a video. So I just did a kayak setup video in my driveway, freezing cold. So I did the video. And strangely enough, that video just took off. Uh, and it's not strangely enough. At the time, I was like, why do people want to see my setup? I just did it because I couldn't go fishing. And sure enough, people wanted to see that. 
And after uh, digging in and just seeing digging into the analytics and YouTube Studio and all that, all the good nuggets they give you in there, I uh, just started doing videos around like my equipment, doing some review videos, and doing a lot less actual fishing videos. Even like last year, I think I maybe did two fishing videos in total. And uh, I still try to make it based around specific uh, topics. So tournament fishing, if I was out fish pre-fishing a tournament, and I was done, I'd just shoot a video right there about tournament fishing and how to get into it, stuff like that. Um, and that's kind of how it, it took off. So YouTube, the thing about YouTube is people go on there to find a solution. So you got to give them something, you know, they're not going to go on to see some random dude fish, probably. You know I mean, unless you're really making moves. So, uh, so I just made it around. Uh, what could be helpful to other people. And uh, the, my biggest video is uh, kayaks for big guys. And that one probably has like 170,000 views now. I put it up about a year ago. It's a question and, as old as time, Jay. <laughs> yeah. And, and so the, the reason I put that up was because when I was looking for my first kayak, I couldn't, I was worried about weight capacities and I couldn't find any videos that only went around weight capacities. I wanted to make sure as someone that's never really kayaked before, I wasn't going to go for a swim. So, uh, so I did that video and it took off pretty quickly. And, uh, so that, that one's, that one's been good. And then like other ones have taken off, you know, my average on like my good videos are probably like 30 or 40,000 views. I have two over a hundred K and then, uh, right now they're probably averaging 10 to 15. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people say it's too late to start YouTube. You had to be started in 2012 or 20, you know, whenever YouTube came out back in 2006, but it really took off in the early 2010s, I guess. But here's Jay talking about really picking it back up. And what'd you say, 2022, 2021? Yeah, yeah, 2022, I really picked yeah, it back yeah. up. So, so Bailey, I'll ask you that. Is it ever really too late to start YouTube? No, I don't think it is. Uh, it's just, uh, I think, four or five years ago, way different than now. I think Jay can attest that, too. Like, the algorithm changes seemingly by the week. Uh, and I'm, I'm definitely not getting ten to 15,000 a video like Jay is here, but it... Uh, it seems like there's specific niches and YouTube definitely has its way. Like it's changing of, uh, are you making content for YouTube versus the people consuming YouTube now, which is, it's a hard thing that I was watching. Uh, I think it was vid IQ that put out that video, but it's a, it's an interesting time. He's gotta be more strategic with it now. Nowadays. I feel like mm -hmm. you guys are catching some Eagles tonight. hell in the comments. Sorry. Oh, I know it's going to be all night and they deserve it. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. Yes. Yeah, so, so Bailey, give us your background. I know you've got your hands in, in multiple fires. So let us know what you got going on right now. Yeah, I started making videos, uh, I think I want to say back in 2016 or 17 when I was in high school. Uh, I was fishing, hunting, and I was really, really, really bad at it. Uh, and just got caught up in sports and everything and it took a long hiatus. Um, but uh, getting out of college... Uh, I had I started the podcast when I was doing an internship and uh, doing the podcast and getting that media going and getting the, through that flow of things kind of influenced me to to get back to uh, making you know fishing videos and I uh, at the time had mixed in uh, on one channel podcast but also fishing videos and decided at the time originally uh, YouTube with the algorithm was um, the algorithm was like kind of clashing long form versus short form. And it was kind of affecting both videos. And so I decided to make my own personal channel. Um, I was already always running a GoPro anyways. And so I just kind of stemmed from there. And just the thing, it's just consistency. I think Jay can attest to that is like, if you let the, the low view videos or in, like the, 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 the lower end performance bring you down. Um, obviously you're going to, you're going to, you know, stuck with YouTube, but if you just stay consistent over time, just keep putting out videos, you'll find a groove, but nothing, nothing too exciting. I'm still here at uh, four and a half thousand subs. Uh, we're chugging along. Yeah. But if you add up all your channels, you got a lot more than that. You got lure lab, serious angler. You've got be the fish. You're all over the place. All, all over the place is a great way to uh, yeah. put that. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Bailey? We don't even know. We don't yeah, even know. That's right. Uh, Sisto's in shock that you said 2017 in high school. Yeah, I started like, okay, 2017 is <laughs> when I started putting on YouTube, but I started filming a bunch of stuff, uh, like hunting and fishing wise, when I was in high school, uh, back and in like 14, 15. He's a young man, Sisto. Don't, don't let him fool you. <laughs> so before we get into the actual channels, Bailey, since you left off there, let's start with this. 
what do you think the most important elements of a good YouTube channel and or a good video are? If you had to pick three or four things, you got to have these things to make a, a solid start to your channel and to have a solid video to go out there. I think right now a top three is first and foremost, like a uh, thumbnail and title. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, but I think the key to long-term watch time because watch time definitely influences how much your video is shown across YouTube and recommended. Uh, I think it's honestly being yourself. Like if you try to, people can tell nowadays if you're faking something. Uh, and I think people being attached uh, to you is showing your personality. So I think if, as long as you're willing to show like, and be raw with it, be real. Like, I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. People are going to attach to that and who you are. Yeah. What about you, Jay, Jay? What about you? What do you think? As far as a, a successful channel, um, being like Bailey said, dialed in, knowing who's, who's your audience or most likely going to be your audience. You're probably not going to figure that out in the first couple videos. Like I, like I didn't figure that out until I put up the video. I didn't want to put up which was about my setup. And then it started kind of gaining traction and going in that direction. So finding your direction and your audience. And then for a video, again, that thumbnail and, uh, and title is the number one thing to get people on there. And once they're actually watching the video, I mean, don't be afraid to chop it up, drop the ums and the, mm and the, and the pauses, like keep it exciting. Cause people don't want to see you. If you look uncertain, and, and there's nothing wrong with with umming. Like I did that a lot when I started and all my videos were, you know, in between everything. So I just cut them out, yeah. you know, and I would do this. Actually, when I started, I would do this weird thing where, where when I was in between thoughts, I would like sniff. And I don't, I don't know, like that <laughs> kind of was like my um. So I actually went through my video and cut out all my snips so that people wouldn't I don't know, think I had some sort of issue. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good, good so, way to cut out, it up. Cut out all the all the extra stuff, uh, so that it's consistent and just flows. You know. Yeah, I like why that. Why is it these goofy ass thumbnails though? Are like the why is that the go to thing? Like where it's some you know real Photoshop looking deal where there's like rays of sunshine shooting out of some dude and then like a big bright green <laughs> title. Why is that what draws people? to to click a video anyone can yeah, take I, that i just i want to know for me personally yeah i don't there, it's a there's an interesting niche on youtube i think what you're referring to is like the guys doing the weird surprise faces yeah shit in, i mean yeah, yeah yeah that's what happens when i, I can't get YouTube. behind all that i i can't i mean the day you see me do a thumbnail like that i'm <laughs> please punch me in the face yeah. uh but like uh, they work though. I think it just, it gets people's attention. That's the biggest thing about, you know, CTR click through rate is, is big when it becomes like, I'm sure we'll talk about it through here, but that's like a statistic that we look at and really all your goal is from a thumbnail is getting somebody to stop and to stop and like, look at what your, your video is, uh, and try to somewhat have something there to influence them. Um, and typically it's the thumbnail catches the eye, the title influences the click. Uh, and so if you can just get something that pops to somebody, that's, that's usually, uh, and again, like Jay was saying, that establishes when you realize who your audience is, which doesn't happen right away. Yeah. Is, is it a fair thing to say, you know, once you put out a dozen videos, two dozen, maybe a hundred videos, I don't know. But once you put out a, a volume of videos, you can look and see, okay, these all got a hundred views. This one got a thousand or 2000 or 10,000. And then it's rinse and repeat on what worked. Is that, is that how you should look at it? No. Yeah, I'd say yeah. ride that wave. If something's working, like yeah. ride that wave as long as you can do that. Cause then you next thing you know, YouTube's gonna change how they want something else. And it's you know, yeah. and it's and it's a lot of honestly, like I'm sure Jay will get to it as well, like studying other channels outside of just uh fishing and hunting. Like it's like Ben Nowak and Alex Rudd, uh, you know, one thing they've a while ago was they, they look at like golf channels kind of like kind of their themes and how they do things you could do there's frisbee golf a whole different thing you can kind of like almost mimic those themes to see if they work pass out that you call the frisbee golf dude he's on pass straight oh, no. out oh. <laughs> what is it what <laughs> disc <laughs> golf <laughs> they call it don't they call it disc golf i call it froth i call it froth but that's yeah, not froth. right either that's, that's, yeah, that's not right either <laughs> uh but yeah what do you say guys you guys want to get into looking at some of these channels uh let's do it 
first of all, I want to say anyone that submitted a channel, I don't know that we'll be able to get them get to them all. I don't know if I even was able to find all the correct links, but we've got well over a dozen pulled up here, tabbed up. Thank you for being willing to share this, uh, being willing to take a little constructive feedback on these because it's not easy to put your stuff out there like that. So appreciate y'all for doing that. So we'll get into these and we get the screen shared. Dun, dun, dun. Grisby. I can't wait to see how this goes, to be honest with you. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited to see. All right. So first up, man. Way. Yeah. First up, AJ Ramirez, uh, his channel, channel name. It's by his name at AJ Ramirez, which is great. That's my channel is by my name. So let's look at his channel to start with uh, from top to bottom there. What do y'all think? Uh, no cover photo, but he's got a, a fishing uh, profile photo there uh, or and or logo. Uh, and then just kind of take a look at his description, things like that. What do you think right off the bat seeing his channel? You want to take it, Jay? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the first thing, I'm not, if you're trying to make a channel around something, I'm not a big fan of just straight up using your name unless you really show what you're what you're about so if you just tell someone yo my channel is aj ramirez you don't know what aj ramirez is all about which is why i went with bearded dad fishing because it's it's easy to point out um so i mean that's just nitpicky and that's me but uh looking at looking at just the the thumbnails that are right there the first thing that they're going to see on that landing page are those three or four thumbnails mm -hmm. they all look drastically different so there's not a whole lot of consistency in those thumbnails uh on there and they're and they're a little bit busy for my taste too all right fair bailey what do you think sir yeah i'm with that as well i'd say uh uh from the top like to add on to jay's point like the the aj ramirez like i would one i mean this is me being ocd as it is like clean up the the AJ Ramirez part. Uh you can have I feel like you can put AJ Ramirez if you had a cover photo showing kind of highlighted what you're doing as a channel uh and in tandem with your profile picture. Um but to Jay's point though like if you had fishing in your name then people would be able to you know from that audience that you could potentially have be quicker to to jump to your channel but uh I'm with that too. I feel like the first couple of videos you have there uh if you don't have a consistency or and I'm sure we're going to get in the thumbnail and all that here in a second. But uh, the nice thing now, at least, is uh, from your channel, you can have a for you section on your homepage. So it kind of whomever is watching and uh, con consuming your content, uh, YouTube will likely bucket what best videos could can, uh, be certain, uh, be best for that person watching the video is what I'm trying to get at. Um, no. But I, I don't think the the front page is... Is bad by any means. I think it just needs a little bit of a cleaning up, and then, um, you know, the the titles from what I can see here look look clean. Uh, I think just a, it's a thumbnail thing, man. Like there's a lot of clutter mm -hmm. on these, so I'd say like it seems like nowadays. Feel free to uh, debate this, Jay, but I feel like simple is better. Like if you can have maybe one or two identifying things what that video might be about, and then something to really draw them in. I'll let the title do the talking. Yeah. Yeah, some some of the really some of the best ones have no text on the thumbnails. I haven't even mastered that. Like I like to put some some text in there, but you gotta you gotta limit it, man. Two two maybe three words. What do you yeah, think, I think about? I the... Maybe have two. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, what do y'all think about the lack of a cover photo? Very important to have that. Yeah, I, I think like, it is I like for sure. It. From a yeah, it's a page identification thing. Like it's just helps you brand who you are, what your what your content's gonna be about. What uh, uh, what what do y'all use for making your thumbnails? What app? So I use uh, Illustrator. So that's that's because I know. I mean, I don't expect most people to know how to use Illustrator. I use it for work, so I'm comfortable with that. What about you, Bailey? Yeah, mine, I literally just slapped a picture of a small mouth in there and whatever YouTube format it is. But uh, like the podcast, though, I have podcast page. I've done like Canva. You can use that as well. They Canva, have templates Canva's for it. Canva is a good one. Adobe Express is another good one. It gives you a lot of overlay options and different font and graphics. They're super easy to import and kind of put in place where you want them. Yeah. So let me, let me yeah. click on one of his vids. We'll watch a short section of it, talk about that, and we'll move on to the next channel. Sweet. All right, so far it's a new canoe. 
So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Don't get mad. Is this the very beginning? Just kidding. Very beginning. Yeah. What is it's that safe? boat doing okay, out there? there I'll be curious to see if this is actually like a, uh, if it's an intro he has, or if this is just specific to this video. Interesting uh, filter switches. Yeah, and these. Yeah. Okay. I would be probably if I was watching this. Cause I usually watch YouTube in the morning when I have coffee on my TV. Yeah, I would totally be checking my TV if there's anything wrong with my screen <laughs> through those filter changes. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop it right there. Uh, and little feedback for uh, AJ on his uh, intro of the video there or this video. Jay, you want to take it? Yeah. So I mean, he you lost me at that intro. Honestly, way too long of an intro. I mean, even if it's like here, you know, showing his 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 kayak tournament setup, which is cool. Intros. I mean, I'm I I do intros. Like I'll usually do, you know, like a like a 15, 10 second spiel, throw my 10 second bumper. But besides that, man, I was uh, I'm pretty sure I was 38 seconds before he even popped up on screen talking. Yeah. Too long. Yeah, I think some of the B roll shots are good that you can include through. The setup video like when you go through and you talk about the motor like that that little clip you had of the kayak out there spot locked by itself uh you could certainly use it in the video but i think him uh the beginning i couldn't hear the audio but him talking to me i'm assuming he's previewing what the video is going to be about start with that like drop tell people what that video is going to be about get the hook uh and then you could always put a little bit of b-roll but uh i don't know what your uh, rule of thumb is jay but like b-roll like keep to like five seconds or so nothing mm. too crazy that yeah the, technically one thing, i think the rule of thumb is like every three seconds your eye wants to see change because we're in such a fast-paced environment i don't i don't stick hard to three seconds but like five seconds is probably my max and is, i can't yeah. i can't speak to the youtube part myself but i can the editing part um I, you want you want to have kind of rapid changes you want to be showing a lot of content in in the amount of time that you you have because you don't want to lose the viewer's interest so just try to switch stuff up you can use a voiceover so if you want to cut back and forth between you talking and your b-roll i think that would be good so they're still getting the message you're trying to deliver but you're using that b-roll instead of it just being kind of you know dead space going into it yeah one of the things i, I was told off the the get-go when i started getting serious about making um you know especially fishing youtube videos was uh, when your video when your video is done, go back through and watch it. And if any time you think you would click off, is when you should edit out. Um, but you now to Jay's point, every three seconds, and and what Ryan was saying, like go watch like the NFL game right now, and beyond like the main play, watch how many times they screen change and how fast they do it. It's the same sort of thing, and that's what you should be doing with your your foot, at least if you want to do it like uh, up to snuff. Yeah, and I didn't have the audio toggled on for everybody. I apologize for that, but the rest of them will have the audio on. But from what I could hear the audio because I'm sharing the screen, the audio was, the audio was also uh, not great. And from everything I've ever read or learned is audio is more important than video quality almost. If you've got choppy audio or, or kind of grainy audio, people you'll lose people quick. So see if you can get a little lapel mic. Some sort of external yep. mic, shotgun mic, road, something. Road mic, they make a great uh, – now they have, like, the little wireless cube clip on. I just got one of those at Christmas. But, uh, you know, they have the lapel mics as well. The audio quality is super good on those. So if you're trying to make a video at least <clears throat> on your intro part, even if you're using a GoPro or whatever, but when you're talking to the camera explaining what the video is, make sure you have good good sound quality. But uh, Yeah, AJ's at, yeah, I'm sorry. AJ seemed like a cool guy. I liked his jersey. It was slick. Just a few things to clean up there. Fair. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I'm sure the content's good. I see some tournament videos he had mixed in there. Just yeah. Keep up the grind. Did you yeah. Did you see the one video he had? I sorted him by popular. He had one from Cold Stone Cold Stone Creamery oh, yeah. with 300,000 views on it. So yeah, I was wondering what that said. It was It was ago. Cold Cold uh, Stone. Was it Cold Stone Creamery Extreme? Yeah. I don't so, know what that is, man. I'm going to go back and watch that later. Well, I no, saw no, that about ice cream. It was professional chef golfer. Like, you know, he's yeah. not just doing fishing. So 
you know, maybe maybe when you do change your title, change it to something that encompasses, uh, you know, a little bit of everything. That way people know that they're not just getting fishing content with you. Yeah. Love All that. right. So next up, Hernan's Real Game. Real Game Fishing. Uh, pretty cover photo there. Cool little logo on his, on his profile photo. Let's see what he says the channel's about. Catch the latest fishing videos and outdoor videos from Hernan's Real Game. Be out on lakes and rivers and occasionally out in the ocean. Try to get the best video I can of my catches. He's got 221 subs. He's got 69 videos out, so he's been putting out some content. Uh, let's take a peek here at some of his videos that he's got out. What do y'all think from the setup of his channel down to, to some of the thumbs you can see there? At least it looks somewhat consistent from a thumbnail standpoint. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's consistent, and it's not, like they're not so busy, the thumbnails. Yeah, I like that the title, if they're if he is going to put something in the the video, at least the word popped a little bit too. It's not like a hard color to see or overlaid or anything. But I would say like the Mississippi River part, Um, I would like, I, I guess in nowadays, like this is be, uh, being nitpicky, is uh, see if you can like, so the first video here he has, the Badger State Championship Day 2, Mississippi River on there. Uh, you can keep the Mississippi River. If you have it in the title, don't put it in the the thumbnail. It'd be one thing if you had a title that was like longish and you couldn't fit the river or the lake name uh, in the title to put it in the, the image. Um, but like blow up the little section where the fish is at type of deal. Uh, have the attention be there because that's what people are going to see and what they're going to stop when they're when they're scrolling. Yeah. And if. I know it's kind of small on your screen, but if you can see his titles, what do y'all think there? They're kind of, I hate to call them generic, but very straightforward titles. Badger State Championship Day 2, Mississippi River Pool 8. I bet, what do you guys think you could do with those titles to to uh, become more search-friendly on YouTube? I would draw it in with... You're very... Conf Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say I would draw it in with uh, something more descriptive besides Day 2 of a championship because... Uh, I mean, it's all—it's almost like uh, those type of titles are more like journal entry type of. You know what yeah. I mean, day one, you know, the, or whatever. I would, uh, I think, as far as the titles, do it something. You know, I don't want to say clickbaity, but something that's going to grab more attention. Like, you know, I caught the you know PB at the Mississippi River, or you know, uh, biggest bass of the of the day at the tournament, or or something like that. That's a little bit tells more more about it than just hey, I was doing this championship and this is day one or day two. Cause I mean, you don't know if he's caught anything or if it's just a <laughs> him talking video. Um, or like small, small mouth on a jackhammer or something like, you yeah. know, maybe something that happened during that video that might be more appealing. Mm -hmm. You can, you can even hit yeah. the shock factor with something that didn't go right with the title, right? Like this sucked. Unbelievable mistake cost me this fish I'll or whatever. Right? On the Mississippi river. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think when you use location, you you definitely pigeonhole yourself. Um, like if you rely on simply just location, it'll it'll be a slow burn for years on end of people that are are strictly searching that. Um, but I think if you can uh, intertwine what we were just talking about, like have some sort of twist. Like you want to have uh, there be a hook in the title, but also hook in that in that thumbnail where it's like, yeah, you know, like we guys were, were mentioning, um, where there's certain people that are still relying on location right now that can do well but i just feel like it, it pigeonholes you in regards to seo yeah i think yeah. you do a great job with that bailey you know your thumbnails aren't overly uh busy but you've got a nice title and then i, I should have your channel pulled up but big fist jumping arrow pointing at it and a, a to the point title and i think that's why your videos do good when they're i think every single video is a over the shoulder shot with a red arrow <laughs> that's <laughs> all right people know what they're getting pretty much all the same consistency <laughs> bailey consistency they know what they're getting that's right uh, that's right Let's uh, let's watch one of his videos here. Let's see what we got. Sit good gear. We got ads on it. This is day two of the Badger State Championship. You guys hear it now? Yesterday I ended up like yeah. 26 place out of 40, so not a very good first day. See if I can make some ground up on day two. It's a cloudy day. That's probably a good thing. And uh, we will see how it goes.
All right, he's left-handed, so I'm I'm deducting points now. <laughs> <laughs> Shower blow time. Here we go. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, so that's about forty seconds of the vid. What do y'all think? I kind of liked how he jumped right into it from the very beginning there. I, I like how he jumped into it myself. <clears throat> Like I said, I probably would break that that initial kind of intro up with either like a cut to you talking, just telling people, again, the audio quality as well. Um, but get to the action. You know, I, I think to for me, like that's that's what you want to see. Like if you, you watch, you know, 30 seconds in and there's not a fish, there's not something crazy happening, you're, I feel like you're likely to click off of it and go to something else. Yeah, uh-huh. I, I will agree. I like that quick jump to the action. I think if anything, include like a small 10 second at the beginning, like especially because he did a day two, do it some sort of like prelude to the day one, kind of set the stage. It also might people that didn't see that day one video might click back to day one and then watch day two. Some might do that and it'll get you some some added viewership. But um, otherwise, beyond that, like just a... Um, little bit more information at the introduction i feel like that was that was good good start anyway yeah yeah i I agree with all those points i think it wouldn't hurt too to like have the camera facing towards them and talking to the camera people connect with it when they can see who that who's who they're listening to people connect with that uh greg blanchard you know one of the best and biggest kayak fishing youtubers out there does a great job of jumping between all those angles you know, over the shoulder, chesty to where you can and talk and to the camera. Look at his things. intros too. There, it's it's quick cuts. It's usually a launching sequence. It's usually him talking about where he's going and kind of what he's going to do, and then it's it's quick cuts, and then goes straight into him usually either catching something or explaining, you know, what he's doing, kind of his his approach on it. Yeah. All right, next channel. That was good. This is an interesting case study. I moved it up in the lineup a little bit. Matt Flanagan fishing. Uh, we can look at his, his cover photo and stuff here, but if you look, he's got 18,000 subs. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, it, that's Matt. good. But if you look at his videos and he, he said this when he commented on the KBN group post, Hey, don't let those subs fool you. He had a short hit. Uh, let's see if we can find the short that hit. Yeah. He had a short 22 million, a 22 million <laughs> skating Bro. short hit. <laughs> And if that happens, right. yeah. Dang. If that happens, you will jump up in subs by thousands. Obviously, that's what happens. Wow. So he hasn't been able to. No, I was gonna say no discredit to to Matt, but it's like a short like that, twenty two million that just says Denver Skate Rat that goes off that's for insane. that much that makes you want to just throw everything away <laughs> because crazy. I'm working so hard on titles and everything. But uh, kudos to him, man. That's pretty sick. Now I want to see it. <laughs> Oh, it's an actual rat. Okay. Oh, it's a rat. I thought it was a human. <laughs> it actually, it's pretty good. I'll say that. <laughs> There's your secret. That's awesome. You go out until wow. you find a small uh, animal running through an inappropriate so, yeah, place. So, Jay, Bailey, here's what you guys need to do. <laughs> go, right. go find a varmint so. somewhere it's not supposed to be. Yeah, but, but seriously, he's got... Nearly 20,000 subs, but subs, they, I've heard it said on vidIQ streams and some other things that subs are kind of a vanity metric anymore. It's more about views, right? So how does how does one translate that many subscribers over into long-form views? Because it's long-form, take a look at his thumbnails, kind of give some feedback on that, but they're 200, 182, 166. They're not pulling uh, views that you would think an 18,000 sub channel would have. Yeah, I think the one thing that bit them on that short is had nothing to do with fishing so it hit a wrong audience for what he's trying to go after um but i think i think the big from what i could see right now obviously we haven't looked at a video yet but this all looks this all looks pretty pretty great i'm curious to see what jay's feedback is but uh i think from his perspective i would just out of sight out of mind don't even look at the subscriber count and just keep chugging along with what you're doing and you'll, you'll realign your audience like it'll still draw them in it's just uh YouTube's got you bucketed weird right now, at least for some part of your audience anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely those, those subs that he got on there for a whole different, they're looking for something else. And even, uh, even like my, my shorts feed is way different than my long form feed. 
because I look at weird things like uh, like the hoof doctor clearing clearing hoofs off of animals <laughs> on my shorts, but I don't watch the long form version of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I, I do like. I think his thumbnails are are very consistent. Some of them are are busy, you know, with with multiple overlays and, and that kind of thing. But I think they are, you know, straight to the point on on what he's doing. You see, he's got some, you know, fairly popular videos uh, recapping tournaments and and kind of covering that that demographic. Yeah, do you think it's a matter of uh, titles, titles and keywords and description, things like that, could be the the holdback? I mean, he's, he's got a, li a little bit of what we talked about with that last channel with some of those titles that it's uh, more like, I'll call them like journal entry types. You know what I mean, this tournament, this day. Um, but some of them are working. I mean, that, that second one there, 1,300 yeah, let's, views. Let's watch one of the videos and see kind of All what right, the, Let's pull up this OH yeah. Ivy video, which obviously OH Ivy's in the title. OH Ivy's been yeah, in that's good. news. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's a hot one, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's that, that's a, that's an asterisk. I think right now, OHIV, that's going to get views. <laughs> I'll be there next week. Hey, so. look, I'm catching yeah. slander for not having YouTube Premium. USA I'm a cheapskate. Leave me alone. I see that. Yeah, you're doing great. Hello, hello. Thanks for checking out my channel. I'm Matt. Uh, if you've watched any of my recent videos, I've been talking about taking a trip down to OHIV in Texas, and I finally made it. In fact, I just got back yesterday. I'm back here in Arvada, Colorado, um, where it's still pretty chilly, uh, but it was pretty great weather down in Texas. We had a couple cold, little windy days, but uh, for the most part, it was great. Uh, mainly just great to get out uh, on the open water. Um, I won't give any spoilers, but I did, I did pretty well. Um, got a plenty of footage, so I'm going to break it up into three, maybe four videos. We'll jump ahead uh, a little bit here. Hope you yeah. like. Got what, like a minute ish long intro? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Hey, but, but I do, I do give him a shout out for having a skateboard back there to keep it true to that short. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Come on, baby. All right, so we've gone for about a minute or so. So what, what do y'all think um, of the intro to that and the setup of that video? A little long, ahead, if I had to say that for that for that intro. Um, people don't want to stick around for that much talking generally. I would probably just – it's it's not bad to start with a talking head like that, but I would keep it much shorter, you know, 15, 20 seconds, and then maybe – uh, like we said with one of those last channels, do a little bit of B-roll while you're doing a little bit of voiceover. Yeah. So while he's sitting on his jack, throw some B-roll over the top of him just sitting there to break it up a little bit. Yeah. Maybe maybe edit in like you say, hey, uh, you know, we're on this trip. We're going to OHIV. I had a great day. While you're while you're telling that story, you know, maybe edit in some like gripping grin shots or something like, you know, to let people know what you're about to show them footage wise is my, my thought on it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. I think if you're going to, cause there's, there's two trains of thoughts there. There is someone that you want to be quick and you just want to get to the fishing action where there's, uh, I'll throw an example in there, like a Sam Sobe that one will show you fishing action, but also, does a really good job of tying people into who he is as a person. And they almost more watch his stuff for who he is than they, than what he's going to show. And he tends to have a little bit longer intros, but what he does and kind of something I've been kind of molding off of him is like, if he's going to have a two minute intro, he's going to splice it up. So like he'll be in one room for 15 seconds and then he's walking outside the next 10 seconds, you know, different things like that. Chop it up versus, versus you just sitting on the kayak type of thing. That's okay to have as an angle, but like, Change it around a little bit just yeah. to kind of like we were talking about earlier, the different scene changes. Even if you go with a different camera angle, like, you know, where I have my camera positioned right now, if I move it three feet to the right, but I, you continue looking at the same spot that way, it fit, you know, visually there's a change like in your mind, you're still you're still hanging in there and listening, you know, listening to the story part of it. But there's a lot of little things like that that you can do that will continue to hold people's attention. Yeah, and, and Matt's actually in the comments following along with what we're saying. Uh, I like your channel, Matt. I'm going to go back and watch some of your videos. I think uh, a few tweaks 
and you'll be off and running over there. It sounds like. Yep. Yeah. I'll sub to you. One one thing I want to mention too. There's a comment from uh, Randy Creason says just do the Greg Blanchard system. No need to overthink it. I want to quickly hit on that because while yes, it can work. Uh, I also want to say that right now, with the way YouTube is, you have to be way more unique than than Greg is doing. And I'm not saying that Greg isn't, but what Greg's done is established a like very loyal fan base where he is yeah. going, he's locked on 30,000, 40,000 views of video that regardless of what he puts out, they get a notification that Greg Blanchard posted and they're going to watch. Yeah. So I think that's one thing too, where he's able to be a little bit more loose on uh, thumbnail and title, things like that, where on the your initial startup, I think you got to be a little bit more creative. Yeah. There's a boiling point, right? Where you get to a certain amount of following that no matter what you put out there, it's, it's going to work. Uh, yeah. th this next one's an interesting case too, man, because this guy Roach. is, is Hammer. one of the, probably the top 10 anglers in the country on any given year or probably just period, uh, yeah. unbelievable angler. And there's a lot of anglers like him that are, that are elite talent, but not great on certain aspects of different social medias. Right. So I would go watch any educational content from Jason, but frankly, I didn't even know he had a channel. Uh, he's got 200 subs over there. Kind of take a peek at what he's got going with his with his channel structure, and then some of his videos. And what do y'all think? Take it away, Jay. So I, I like that he included the banner, um, and it shows exactly what what you know what I mean what he does. Um, as far as I mean, first thing I'm thinking about when I'm seeing his his thumbnails down there, uh, he he seems to have titled them pretty good. You know, um, as far as if people are looking for again those tournament day videos those um, those two maybe can be titled a little bit better but like that z-man trd one sounds fine i'd probably spice up the thumbnails a little bit more yeah. you know make it a little bit more vi visually appealing not necessarily adding text but like for those for those uh hobie bos ones maybe him grabbing a fish having a fish you know if he had a selfie with it or something like that would probably be a little bit more eye grabbing yeah my, see, my yeah. eye is drawn to Big Bass at night immediately. Like that's the first that's the first thing that I want to click when I look at it. So I think you know something like you said, short to the point uh, on the thumbnail piece. Uh, it, the TRD video, like you know, throw something on there that that's that's letting people know what you're about to talk about. Yeah. I've outside seen of the title, Rudd and some other guys. I think I've seen maybe you do this too, Billy. Uh, you'll have just the bait will be the thumbnail. Be the thumbnail. Just yeah, out yeah. there, highlighted, you know, maybe some water in the background and just bit the bait itself. So, you know, had he just done that with that that bugs uh, to clean that up. Uh, and then you guys, I think it was Jay that mentioned consistency earlier, or maybe both of you did. This video, uh, the, the, the yellow, I think that's, I don't know what that is on there. Plastic, life jacket, I don't know. Uh, that was posted 12 days ago. And then his next video was four months ago. So how how important is consistency to the growth of your channel? I think it's huge. Cause if you don't post for a while, I mean, either one YouTube's going to stop showing you, um, cause it's kind of showing your, I guess, lack of, um, activity, if you will. Um, but I think too, it's just like when you're consistent once or twice a week, people know you're going to be posting once or twice a week. So they know they have content coming. It's easy for them to attach to their, to your page. Um, where you kind of know it's a good sign where if you don't post for a week and people either asking you or wondering what's going on that you're, you're not posting. Um, whereas this, I feel like you kind of just get lost uh, in the archive of, of YouTube when you don't post for that long. Right. Yeah. And to add, to add to that. Um, yeah. Like YouTube, like people are expecting the videos, but also YouTube, I mean, you're feeding the algorithm. So, so if people are interacting with your video, they're liking, they're sharing, they're commenting. YouTube will share your content for a certain amount of time until it falls off. If they don't interact with your videos anymore, eventually uh, those those views or those uh, you won't show up on their homepage nearly as often. Uh, you know, you start falling off little by little and then until you're completely off their homepage because they stopped interacting. So if you're not posting for, you know, a month, two months, three months, there's you don't even give a chance to to continue that interaction because you're almost coming in fresh every time if you're waiting for months in between. 
And, and one thing you can do that, that I've done with some, some different channels, I've got some other channels, not even in fishing, uh, batch produce content. If you know, you're going to be busy for the next couple of months, sit down one afternoon and make four or five videos. So you can just schedule them to go out once a week for the next month. Y'all ever do that? I'm in that right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I have videos from, uh, the fall and the summer still that I'm going to try to, to rework for some, some winter content where it's, I won't make it seem like from, you know, summer con you don't want to post like summer frog fishing in the winter. You'll, you'll have people yeah. watch it, but, uh, relevance is is huge so i'll kind of like twist it in a way um but yeah i think that's a big thing too but there's nothing yeah. wrong with taking a couple of weeks off uh, i think it's it's okay there about four months is a long time i think being aware of when people are going to be looking for stuff too right like we we went on a gator hunt and i shot a gator hunt video i'm not going to post that until gator season rolls back around because there's not going to be many people in the middle of winter like, you know, searching gator hunt in Louisiana or whatever. Like you have to be aware of, of yeah. when things are applicable. And sometimes you may catch, you may have a great video. Either you didn't edit it on time or it's the end of the season. It's rolling into something else. You dropping it at a different time can make a huge difference in when people are going to be searching for that topic. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's play. Yeah, nobody's posting here. ice fishing. No one's going to post ice fishing. I'm going to try ice fishing tomorrow in our pond, so we'll see how that goes. Keep in mind, this video is two minutes long in total. I like that he has an, an intro. I like an intro myself, like a, you know, a bumper on the front end. I like that. What's going on, y'all? Happy New Year. It's 2024, and it's about time to start kayak tournament fishing again. Um, an important safety tip before you get out on the water this year is to give your PFD a good look over. You know, it's the most important piece of safety equipment you have. Your life is worth, you know, everything to some people, so that at the very least, you need to make sure you have a good PFD and that you're wearing it. Um, a good piece of advice I'd give anyone, especially if you have an inflatable, you know, give it a good look over. Make All right. So we watched the first minute or so of the video. What do you, what do y'all think of uh, intro lighting, audio, et cetera? I think uh, first thing I, I like uh, an intro sometimes too. I'd say don't make it too long. Like if you have like a standard intro that you make for each video, but also don't put it like at the very beginning, like go, come in there and be like, I'm going to give you a, a great safety tip for kayak fishing hit the intro for about five to six seconds, something quick that maybe is a branding thing and then go into, yeah, what you're, he's going to talk about. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I do like the, I do like the intro. Anything showing big fish to me, it's like almost social proof. Yeah. And he's got some hogs. So, you know, that's, cred. that, that adds to it, but I agree. Draw, give the hook first, get them, get them drawn in with whatever you're going to say, then throw your, your little bumper in there. And then, and then whatever you're gonna talk about uh, after that. I had something else and it totally left me, but I'm sure I'll remember. <laughs> I think for that video, since he's gonna be talking about PFDs, maybe hold up a PFD, like you know, do do something that that locks people in more so than than just the talking point. Be like, hey, what's the most important you know piece of equipment you've got? Grab a PFD. You need to check your PFD for safety, whatever, and then cut to. I, obviously there was an issue here with this this inflatable pfd so i think you know just uh, again chopping it up but something that's going to draw the eye so people pay attention to it have y'all noticed the longer this has gone on the more involved ryan's gotten in spite of acting like he didn't know nothing he's in here dropping well, there's a lot of <laughs> silence jeff so i'm trying to <laughs> turns out this is an sounds like a youtuber podcast. yeah this is no, an it's audio not. podcast so. this is great this has been great come on help now. me help you all right, all right. one so thing i'm watching one video thing, jones I, get wrecked yeah. Yeah. So Maybe one thing I noticed in this right video, now. that uh, that video is that I don't I don't like to date my videos. So first thing he did was uh, in you know Happy New Year. We're in 2024, so I don't like to do that because if people watch this a year, two years later, I'm more prone to watching it if I don't know it was shot two years ago for whatever reason. So I try not to give those type of like markers on dates, and that that might just be a me thing, but. Uh, you know, people will know later on that it's it's two or three years old if it comes up on the autoplay or whatever, and they might just be like, ah, oh, this is old info and, and toss it to the side. Yeah. 
let's jump into this next channel. This has been going almost an hour now. I didn't realize, you know, time oh, flies. Yeah. I'm in there. having fun. We're, we're having fun over here. Uh, so this is a good one. This is a brand new channel, obviously. There's seven subs, eight videos, uh, a couple shorts, a couple long forms. So, Jake, appreciate you sharing this. A New Yorker, Bailey. Jake yeah. from New York. What's he fishes New York? my club. I'm actually in the top left of his banner. Oh, yeah, there you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually on his page right now. Yeah, how about, how about that? <laughs> Did you know you would be that he was on this? So there we go. Uh, so yeah. let's take a look at Jake's page. He's got four long form videos out. Um, what do you think of his his banner? Some of the video thumbs, things like that. So so I don't. Uh, first thing I noticed with all those faces, I wouldn't know who who Jake is out of those 12, 14 guys. So I'd do yeah, something a little bit a little Bailey bit more clear on, and concise on that. Just yeah. edit Bailey out for sure. <laughs> Yeah, get that ugly mug out of there. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree there. Like, put in something that people can establish what the the channel is going to be about. Like we were, we were talking about earlier, uh, give people a better idea of what your content's all about. Okay. Uh, what do you think of the just the four videos that are up? We've got one thumbnail with that that looks like jig trailers, some crawl type trailers. Yeah. Uh, but then his other vids shot in the the vertical vid format on a long form video. Uh, what do you think there? No thumbnails in uh, the the format of the video. Yeah, I think if he's going to do bait stuff like we were talking about earlier, I would take face out of it, or at least have the emphasis be uh, on that bait or whatever product he's showing. Um, but also, like, especially vertical wise, I w if you're going to do vertical, splice that up into your 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 uh, main hit points and put them as shorts. Um, yeah, I think I gonna unless you're going like to put them as horizontal. Shorts. Yeah. I thought yeah. those were shorts just when I looked at it, I thought those were shorts. So I, I would definitely say shoot landscape mode uh, for your long form stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah I thought they were shorts too, man. Yeah. And yeah. even that first yeah. one that has a proper thumbnail lighting's really yeah. bad. So, I mean, even, uh, even, so if we're taking photos, even with our like portrait mode on iPhone or something like that, like you can get some crisp shots. I would just, you know, take a couple extra seconds to fix it up. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's hit one of his vids and see what we get going here. What's going on, everybody? Today, I want to take some time to talk about the opportunity I had to fish the New York Invitational Kayak Tournament. What that is, is, uh, there's six kayak leagues, uh, throughout the state and, uh, those each of those leagues will take their top 10 guys in points for AOI and uh, put them all together and they'll fish in one big championship style tournament at the end of the year. Uh, I was able to qualify through my league, uh, NYKBF. Um, so watch about 30 seconds. Some thoughts on, we already talked about the format. Uh, I think that's very distracting having the, the white borders on the video itself, don't y'all think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Horizontal, it would be just fine. Yeah, you can only watch so much of the of that in that uh, portrait mode before yeah. your eyes kind of get tired of that. Yeah, he's picked up a few subs, yeah. looks like. He picked up a sub or two, so good job, yeah. Jake. Um, and, uh, I said the biggest ahead, thing... Yeah, just the biggest thing like Jay was talking about earlier is the uh, the dead spaces, the ums, uh, the things like that. You can You can edit those out, and it makes it way smoother. That way it's uh because i think he might have had a note sheet he was kind of glancing down like what he was looking yeah. at yeah, like if you have something yeah. in front of you it gives you time to look at it and know what you're saying um like i think it's the thing with with youtube unless you're live like you don't have to have a one take of everything you're trying to talk yeah. about like you can splice it up hit your points take your time you know breathe through it type of deal mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and even uh, a some lot a lot of, of the biggest my bad sorry go ahead no no go some ahead. of the biggest creators you can see them cut up like every five or six words you know, and, I, and then once I saw that uh, on some of the bigger creators, I was like, man, I'll, I'll do that myself. So it easy, it's easy enough to just cut out those ums, even if they're every other sentence or so. Uh, but I think my biggest critique, if you will, for that video is that the title didn't didn't portray to anything in the first 36 seconds of that video that we saw. Like it was about fall fishing a rigs, but he wasn't talking about that, at least from what we watched. Yeah, like I, I was kind of going moving ahead with my with my uh, with the slide bar there to see what was coming. It looked like about halfway through, you could see an A rig coming up. I didn't want to go through the whole video. But would have been, would it have been better had he led off with this A rig dominated in this fall tournament for me or, or something like that? Would that have been better? Yeah, I think that would hook get people, and that's the biggest in. thing. Yeah, 
Yeah. First ten uh, seconds, I feel like are some of the most important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Three the hard way says tough. Depends on people. A lot of do. A lot of people do watch YouTube on their phone. I guess that format might look right, but they're going to display it in a in a uh, horizontal format, even if you shot it vertical on your phone. If it's yeah. in, in long form, so I, I don't think yeah. that's going to show up right. Well, Maybe it will. I mean, that being said, that's a fairly new channel. You know, yeah. obviously it's ah. it's fresh. You know, you it's not like you're down a rabbit hole but you know make some of those make some of those adjustments and just change the change how you're presenting your content and i think you'll see you know obviously a, a positive impact on that yeah yeah for sure and you know he's so new if you do 50 videos and go back and watch your first or second one you'll be embarrassed of yourself i, I go back and watch the first podcast we ever did actually i watched last week and i'm still a little bit embarrassed but the first one <laughs> The first one we ever did, I mean, think about how much you, Jay Bailey, the first video you ever put out on YouTube or wherever it was, uh, Instagram, whatever, how much better are you now? So I would encourage him to keep going because he'll get more comfortable from the camera. Yep. More comfortable at, at not having to look at notes. All those kind of things will come with time. So just keep posting. That's what mm-hmm. I, that's another thing I was going to say is, is just practice getting comfortable in front of the camera. It's okay to have notes. It's okay to forget what you were saying. Take four or five takes if you have to on delivering that message and, and splice those together, you know, to where it's all smooth. But talking in front of a camera is completely different than <laughs> sitting around and talking, talking to your buddies. You know, I mean, when the camera's on, you feel like you can't make a mistake. But when you're editing things, you can make all the mistakes you want. You're you're in control of what people see. So just don't don't put it out there. Yeah. And something that helps me with that delivery method, even now, is I'll I'll shoot, you know, I'll shoot half of my video first. And then I'll I'll shoot it, hit record and everything, but then I'll go back and reshoot it because I've already kind of established what I want to say and how I want to say it. And that second go around is every single time, you know at least at least 50 percent better when i go through it because it's fresh in my mind i kind of figured out all the all the points i want to throw out uh so that 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 helps you with getting more comfortable there, there's some people in the comments yeah. trying to drop their links to channels to review and we'd love to do that except we're not going to have enough time we're already getting up against as long as this pod usually goes people submitted these channels three or four days ago on the kbn page that's where we got all these from we weren't taking them from the comments although i'd love to do that if you guys like this show, we can try to set one up in the future if you think it went well. I think it's been pretty fun. If you guys yeah, I think it's been right. helpful. Absolutely, I man. Mean, you guys obviously know yeah. what you, you know what you're doing. I think it's been good advice for for the listeners. Yeah, and people have a lot of questions when it comes to this. I mean, it's it's not it's not easy. It's definitely a grind. So, you just got to you got to grind it out, but it's uh, it's nice to be able to learn with other people that are kind of on the same journey. Randy, yeah. I don't know what this question means, but yes. If it's what I think he means, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, but if, if it's on the on the on the light sided for conversation's sake, uh, there there was one video that I actually put out that I deleted because I think it was um, it wasn't good for what my audience in the direction that I was going. Um, where I had put out like thirty videos in a row of kayak fishing content, and I went out on a boat. And I had the thumbnail with the boat and everything. Okay, so you were wrong. Uh, I love it. And man. people just didn't care that it was boat content, so I ended up removing it because, like, it was just so horribly statistically wrong that it just I didn't want to have YouTube try to bucket me somewhere different. And so I took that down to try to steer back into the audience that the kayak fishing videos were taking me. Yeah, the audience get used to what you're serving them, and they want to have more of that. That's why they're your audience, right? Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I've, I've seen a lot of, of tips and techniques videos about that. It's kind of like going to a re- your favorite restaurant, you know, for that serves tacos. And then all of a sudden they try to serve pancakes or something. It's like, what, what yeah. is this? It doesn't make any sense. Don't trust it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Instagram would be a good show. Yeah. You know, we've got some, it's funny how people lock in on different, there's some people good at all of them, but you know, people lock in on certain social medias. I told you guys before we went live, we kind of did it backwards. We grew on Facebook before we did instagram or youtube we're trying to grow on youtube uh, other people are huge on instagram and have barely a youtube presence so for sure there could be shows on all the different platforms ryan you're over there killing it on the tic tac aren't you up Who to knew? like a hundred thousand <laughs> followers or some craziness over there so yeah yeah 
was it a rat in a pool video that got you up there yeah, it was, was a it? dance video man I've, i'm oh. really i'm a secretly a choreographer <laughs> i didn't want to tell you guys but a little, little mark coat so style loose. over there <laughs> yeah. oh no <laughs> oh buddy that's bad uh <laughs> Yeah, you guys want to do one more channel, answer a few questions, and get out of here. Is that good? Let's do it. And if we didn't get to your channel tonight, I, I apologize. But this, uh, you know, we were thorough on each one. It took a long, longer than I thought. So Eight Mile Drifter, I like his uh, Minecraft looking photo there <laughs> for the for the phone. Uh, Eight Mile Drifter, cool name. Freshwater and inshore saltwater fishing. Three hundred eighty four subs. He's got one hundred nineteen videos out. Kind of take a peek at what he's got going with some of his thumbnails and different things there. Uh, yeah, I, would, I think the I, I would change the black the black lettering. It's hard to see with some of the backgrounds. That's that's my initial take. Yeah, you guys the font to like have that font be bolded as you know typically on the wider side of things where thinner font doesn't it doesn't pop. That's that's yeah. the biggest thing. You just want th something to have contrast that stands out. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Even with the uh, that mega bass one with the baby pop, even like that that font choice is just thin and it's easy to miss. So when did, the, the yeah uh, bolder text with an outline or something, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it make it bold. It's misleading when you're working on thumbnails because you're working on it on a big giant screen, but then you forget when people are scrolling through the thing, they're looking at a little maybe inch and a half image on their phone. Um, so, so it, it gets hard to see when there's not a lot of contrast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the font. Got okay. The, we've got kind of varying, yeah, varying fonts and stuff. I like the over the shoulder shots, which Bailey, you know about that. It's fine to have that. It's just, uh, clean up the font and the, in the words a little bit. Uh, let's watch. Yeah, I mean, one of these. he's got crappie bass popular, BFS mixed in there. Videos, Jeff, and let's watch, uh, let's see what, what, what we got up top. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've got some, we've got some big yeah, hitters. So we got 14,000. Yeah, right. So that changes it up, you know, as far as what we, what we just looked at from the initial take on the page. So do you think these simple thumbs as opposed to the, the kind of faded font made a difference in, in the view, viewership of these guys or, or the, yeah. the title? What do you think it was? Yeah. And they're quickly recognizable. I mean, you know what you're looking at right away. Yeah. Yeah. I think, Simple, straightforward. I mean, especially bait stuff. Like that was one of the sole reasons we uh, made the lure lab is because that them that audience that is just strictly about bait videos, bait information that always does well. Like talking to where Jay mentioned earlier about kayak set of videos, you are guaranteed a few thousand video or a few thousand views if you do a kayak set up video nowadays. Same with boat setups, the same thing. It's just uh, those are locks, regardless of what you put, as long as you have something showing that bait. Let's uh let's check out this new way to rig a but this is his most popular video ten months ago. Let's check this out real quick. Sometimes I just want to run a car. Damn. Go. It's a good title too. What's your YouTube PayPal, uh, premium yeah. there, man? Yeah, what's hey, your look? Look. Take that out of go. my cut. All right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> For your YouTube premium. I'll pay it. I'm with you, Jeff. It's all good. The same. The ads support my people I watch. That's what I'm leaving on there. All right. So straight into the content. There's a weed guard. So you're going to be making a tube jig that ha that uses this weedless weed guard, kind of like a bass jig. And that's going to let you skip easier. You're going to be able to skip with lighter jig heads. And you're going to be able to fish a tube very weedless. And you're not going to worry about whenever you set the hook, that tube bunching. All right. So that, <laughs> no, there was a kid screaming back there. That's somebody getting their ass beat in the background. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Just have it. But <laughs> I love that. The wife watching the game. The, there was a guy, there was a guy years ago that had a channel. I think his name was Kevin Bullington. I can't remember that for sure. But if I'm right, tell me in the comments. Uh, he did videos just like this. All you could see was his hands and he re reviewed crankbaits and stuff and different baits. And he would do it just like this. He would jump straight in to reviewing the bait or reviewing the setup or whatever. Uh, and in doing that, do you think that's why this video took off for him is the title is simple and the people that clicked on it wanted to see the new way to rig it and he went straight into doing that. No no wasted time. You think that helped? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a great title. I think the only thing I, I would nitpick on this is 
like Jay was saying earlier, different like camera angle to mix in, maybe of him talking through some stuff that might be he's not showing stuff with his hands, like talk to the camera type of deal. And then uh yeah, just audio. <laughs> Nobody's uh people kind of tune out when people are screaming in the background, but that's again, that's nitpicky. <laughs> Josh, Josh Evans said cheeks clapping in the background just during the sub. So <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Josh. Never what's, wrong what's wrong with you? All right. So what I think eight mile, I think you got some uh, stuff to work with there, man. Just a few things yeah. to uh maybe work on and well, clean up. Yeah, and if I can if I can add for this, I think the reason this one did so well too is because it's it's a so it's again a solution to an issue. Like people yeah. are, this is gonna be search based for sure. People are looking for ways to rig up a bass tube, you know, weedless. So if he if he kind of runs with that and does that type of style video with a couple different lures, maybe or even some you know, this is something he could recreate again in a year, and it's something that will kind of keep turning out views for him. You know, just because you did a video once doesn't mean you can't uh, reuse that same information and present it in a slightly different way, you know, a year, year and a half down the road. Does it flip? Who knows? Who knows? Good stuff. All right. Ethan was begging for one more look. So get, let's give a quick look to Ethan's channel. And we'll wrap this thing up. Ethan Jet, Trash. Another really good angler. Really good angler. Uh, that's trying to grow over on YouTube. So let's look at some of his thumbs. It's Here. Hot garbage. <laughs> Damn. That's the harshest comment I'm of the pissed. night. You're, you're Man, pissed about the Eagles game. That's my, the... that's my job. Yeah, what I'm more caught on the Eagles game Chill now. Out, I'm just messing with him just because because we know him. But uh... Wow. <laughs> Sorry, just Ethan. Kidding, Ethan. Positive feedback was the theme of the it's night. Okay. So, oh, Ethan's saying garbage. <laughs> he knows. He's he's I okay. I like crabs or worms. That's my, <laughs> that's the that's <laughs> the uh, first thumbnail I want to click. All right, so let's look at the most popular videos right here. You guys mentioned the kayak setting setup videos already. Boom, right there. Mm -hmm. That's his highest viewed video ten months ago. Five thousand views on a Hobie Pro Angler fourteen. You know, um, so. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I think I mean, uh, I like, like the, the like font the and everything. Weird. Yeah, like it, it pops. I think if anything, uh, like the see how that yellow, like the font he's got, that that pops. It gets people to see, uh, or at least to stop to see what the thumbnail is. I think if anything, uh, just shrink that font if you're going to keep it in there, um, so you could see more of what the picture and the thumbnail is going to show, uh, like the action, if you will. And then like you were talking about earlier, not having like if you have text, like my first my first boat tournament. You have it in the thumbnail and in the title. Just pick one or the other that you're gonna you're gonna choose to have that in. Yeah, there, there's a point in no return with words, right? Too many words on a thumbnail, and you, you kind of lose it. You don't see any of the words if there's too many, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, and I noticed with this one, I mean, it probably has the best uh, video to subscriber ratio. So I think he had 32 videos. I mean, so that's some like 10 10 subs per video. It's, it's not bad. I mean, compared to some of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So let's watch one of his. Uh, let's we'll watch his. You want to watch his latest video or his most popular video? What do y'all say? Let's watch the popular one. All right, let's do this. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Jet's Fishing Adventure, and I'm here to show you my ultimate fishing kayak. So this year for 2023, we are running the Ike Edition Hobie Pro Angler 360. I love it. All right. So what do y'all think? Intro, kind of set the video up, cut away. Was the intro too long, long enough? What did y'all think? Generally, I'd say it's too long, but since it was directly related to, I mean, he got your attention by what he's going to do. He hooked you with the setup and then the, intro was essentially showing the overview of the setup before he jumps into it. So I think it worked out well in this case. Yeah. I think the setup of that was perfect. I think if anything, you know, nitpicking it's uh, the, the B roll of the kayak setup itself, just make that a little bit shorter, but that was, yeah, that was just, awesome. Even if you take that video and just cut it, you know, four or five times, just so it looks like it's switching. And it, again, it's not really like changing too much as far as the content that you have. 
but just making those cuts just so it, it looks, you know, sharp, like you're moving from one section of the boat to the other. So like jump from bow to stern to seat to whatever real quick. Or, or features, you know, like graph, pole, motor, that kind of thing, you know, just, just so it, it keeps it fresh. So people aren't mm -hmm. like, oh, well, he's just showing me, you know, up and down of his guy. Just, just so it keeps the, you know, your mind working. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, so we're going to wrap this thing up here in a second. Real quick, Jay, you can go first. Some quick tools that you suggest for the folks watching that even if they didn't get their channel reviewed, they can take some of the tips you guys have get shared for other channels and use them. But what are some tools, software, whatever out there that you can use to help enhance your channels? Sure. So if you have, so we talked about thumbnails a lot. Super, super important. If you have zero graphic design ability, that's okay. You can jump on to something like Fiverr and get thumbnails made up. I, I have someone actually make most of my thumbnails, not because I can't do it, but because it saves me time. And, uh, and it's just a lot easier. You can pay five or six bucks, have someone do it. And it's something off your plate. Um, you know, but you still, you still give the direction. So you let the guy know, or the girl know, or whatever, what you want. You still take the photo of your lore or your setup or whatever, and then they'll jazz it up for you. But that's, that's an easy, easy thing to do. You don't got to really worry about it. I like it. Bailey, any tools, yeah, software out there? I think in regards to like thumbnail stuff, um, I just go strictly off of uh, Photoshop. Um, but beyond that, I mean, I don't use anything fancy. I use Final Cut for, for editing and things like that. I think one thing just kind of a little bit different, maybe not software-wise, but something that's really helped me is uh, I have a little group chat like – with like my buddy, you know, Alex Rudd, Ben Noack, people like that, that uh, are YouTube as well, that we throw our title ideas and thumbnails in a group chat and we kind of give each other feedback before we post. Uh, I can't, I mean, honestly, I don't think my channel would be doing what it's doing now uh, if it weren't for that kind of feedback. Uh, I've heard I learned a lot, almost pretty much everything I know about YouTube from, from guys like that. But that just, that collective feedback definitely helps from a improvement and keeping up with how, youtube is changing so fast we don't allow youtube links on the kbn group page but if you want to post your thumbnails and ask for feedback there if you dare go for it try it what do you think if you <laughs> dare <I was> gonna... <laughs> way to preface that one you want yeah, to run yeah. through some of these questions jeff yeah yes yeah. star them up uh i think this one's not serious but what is a thumbnail robbie anderson was thumb... it's, it's a cover photo pictures that we showed you there yeah, yeah. Uh, this one from Todd Martins is interesting. Do you guys actually give good, legit info on areas you're fishing? If it's a, say a tournament video or just a big fish video struggle, he struggles to want to share shit that works. He doesn't want to give up the juice. That's a probably, I think Jay can agree. Like from a fishing video standpoint is one of the hardest turmoils of trying to put out content is you're going to expose stuff. You just kind of got to face the fact, like if you're going to put out, you're going to make a YouTube channel of fishing content, you're going to expose something. It's kind of the one thing you just got to uh, face the facts. But um, for me personally, like when I'm in my home state, I don't talk anything. I don't make any word or notion to where I'm fishing. I mean, if you know it, you know it. Um, but I don't talk about it. Whereas like if I'm traveling, you know, on the road for a Hobie event or something, like I'll be, hey, where it's the Santee Cooper event, because people are going to know one way or another. So you might as well kind of lay out where you're at type of deal. But beyond that, that's about as all of area information you're going to get from me. What about you, Jay? So I don't do uh, I don't do a whole lot of tournament fishing. So I think my my uh, perspective is a little different. So I'm and I, I'm probably overly helpful. Like I'm the guy that they'll pass by and be like, oh, you know, what you catch a fish on? I'm like, oh yeah, I threw a chatterbait over, over here and I did this, I did that, and because I, I like to help other people like that. Um, but it's the repercussions for me are a little different. You know what I mean? Uh, so, I think as long as you're not like burning a honey hole, you know, whether, yeah. whether it's something that, you know, you heard through the grapevine or whatever, I wouldn't go into like specific detail on exactly where you're at. If somebody can recognize it from watching your video, whatever, but I wouldn't go to like cousin Bob's secret spot <laughs> and, and burn it up. Like that's probably a video I, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't post on that one. Um, this is more of an agree or disagree. You guys can just comment real quick on this outdoor conquest on YouTube title and thumbnail should be decided before you even begin to edit the video. Agree. Disagree. hundred percent. 
Jay's way better than me, so he has the best answer because honestly, I make that crap after I edit the video. <laughs> I kind of just steer with what I got. I go fish for the day and I'm like, oh, well, I don't know what to make of this. There's many times afterwards, like, I have no idea what I'm going to title this thing. <laughs> this is a great question right here. If you shave, will, your ch- will you change the name of your channel to Dad Fishing? <laughs> I guess I uh, pigeonhole myself here. I can't. I cannot shave. Yeah, beard for life. You like Shane Williams? You cannot shave. Oh, <laughs> oh, shots fired. Hey, it's a, I can't grow a beard, so you know well, it's the complete opposite. I, I can grow half of one. Yeah. Uh, how does music help? Help or hurt? Music? Yes or no? I think it, 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 from like when we were talking earlier about the attentiveness and people's ability to keep watching. I think it helps, but if you are strategic in where you use it and how loud you use it if that makes sense yeah yeah it's got to be subtle you don't want it like like the too distracting i think like what that video we just watched from ethan jet like when there was that point where he wasn't talking that's a great great time to put in music because you don't want to just like a silent video of <laughs> of going up and down the kayak or whatever. So I think there should be some audio component to the majority of your video. This next one, Matt Collins on YouTube. Do you prefer phones over GoPros for intros or anything not in the boat? Video seems better on my new iPhone for those. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the channel Headwaters Kayak Fishing, but he basically made that entire channel with a phone. And it wasn't the new phones. It was just an old iPhone. So I think phone's fine for shooting video, don't y'all think? Yeah. Yeah. It's got decent audio. I mean, like, um, one of the channels for some people probably know here, Mav, who does like a bunch of truck camping, but he's been in the fishing industry a while. He's got like two point something million subs. He's strictly off of iPhone. Yeah. This whole con well, he's got some GoPro for B roll, but you you can definitely do what you want with, with iPhone pending your content. I like it. Uh, we'll make this the last question. We'll let you guys get out of here. We I certainly appreciate y'all taking the time. What's the score of the Eagles game, Bailey? You keeping up? You uh, 16 to 9, and it okay. should be way worse. So you're hanging in there. Um, we got a Packers fan in the comments. This will be the last question. Tim Grant with the Packers logo. What y'all's preferred editing software? Just hit on that real quick. So for I like uh, uh, I use uh Premiere Pro, but I went I went to school for video editing, so it's a little bit uh like I, I just have that background i went i did final cut for years and i mean they're kind of all the same from from what i've played with between the two uh, i hear a lot of good things though about davinci resolve being a lot easier to use and it's also free they have a free version yeah i'll use, second that i mean i use i use final cut now um but definitely for a while i was using davinci and so yeah if you don't want to pay money for uh, editing software that one's pretty good. Yeah, Ryan, it's, it's pretty easy to use. I use Premiere Pro and Final Cut. I'm faster on Final Cut, but you also can't do as much with Final Cut. So that's kind of the kind of the trick. Uh, you know that that Premiere Pro screen, Jay. You know is is kind of busy, and there's a lot of different layouts. Like you can click a wrong button <laughs> in the editing process, and your entire video board uh, looks very confusing. So I think Premiere Pro requires a little bit more time uh than final cut yeah well gentlemen uh let's wrap this thing up ryan unless you have anything else uh let these eagles fans get on to trying to bring their team back uh i can't thank y'all enough for for doing this if you're watching this please go sub bearded dad fishing and be the fish serious angler and all bailey's channels that was like some great (laughs) info that was some juice that was some juice so appreciate y'all appreciate you guys coming on and hopefully you know people got some some good nuggets out of this yeah yeah thanks for having the invite hey actually cap cut so here's a comment on here cap cut is free too cap cut is awesome by the way like if you are doing shorts or reels or something on your phone cap cut is phenomenal with with transitions it's super easy to edit um i if you're really trying to run with the youtube thing i probably wouldn't you have to transfer all the the video files over to your phone or whatever uh, to edit, but if you're, you know, quick on the go, cap cuts, definitely great. There you go. Yeah. Hey, if we didn't get to your channel, apologies, but maybe we'll do another one of these and we'll get to it next time. Uh, hopefully you got some good info out of this. We'll wrap it up. Be back on a little uh, kayak tournament action next week. All huh, right. Oh yeah. All right. Gentlemen, appreciate y'all. We're out of here. All right. Peace.